This week on Power Talk, we are speaking to the CEO of the Nairobi Hospital. That's James Nyamungo, who joins us. Thank you so much for making time for us here on the program today. Thank you, Fon, for having me. Great. This evening. Good. I mean, um, I want to start. We'll talk about Nairobi Hospital and the transformation in, in just a moment. But, you know, there's been a story that has been in the headlines, and that's regarding um, the death of the director of finance, Maigo, who um, was murdered about 10 days ago now. Yes. Um, you know, we're also hearing of, of details of, of arrest of the suspect. But I, I just want to get a reaction from you, um, you know, having worked with him. What has this process been like for you, for the staff um, at the hospital? What's your reaction? Yvonne, this has been a very difficult moment for the family of the Nairobi Hospital and also the institution as a whole. And uh, all of us, we are saddened by the murder of this gentleman who was one of the best staff I've ever worked with. I joined in the Nairobi Hospital and this is one of the staff I recruited and he has been actually my right hand person, especially on the execution of the financial matters within the institutions. So I would like to take this opportunity first to send my condolences to the family of Eric Maigo, that is him say on Jari, and the entire family and uh, telling him that we are with him and as the stories unfold, we are also looking to, to know what was the cause actually. That's yeah. yeah, and how the staff taking it, it how are you dealing with the family? It has been very difficult, but uh, I thank God that we have been having counselors are coming out to counsel our staff to understand the situation and accept the situation itself. It is very perplexing, especially to us, because I was the last person on that Thursday, which was on 14th, I had interacted with him during a board in finance and investment committee. We had made a very good presentations, which was properly, I see one of the uh, ways he has actually delivered is from the provision of you. Then we were to meet the following day, but that day never came. Mm. And uh, it was really disheartening to come the following day to find out that uh, Eric was no more and the person I was with him about 12 hours ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, we certainly wish uh, his family and the staff, um, you know, well as they go through this difficult moment. Um, James, I want to talk about uh, your time at Nairobi Hospital uh, now here on Power Talk. Um, and I'd like to get, you know, an interesting understanding because you have made a great transition having spent close to three decades in energy um, and then now moving to the health sector. Um, so tell us about this interesting uh, you know, change of fields and, and what you see as the nexus between two very key fields, that's energy and health. Yes, you are right, Yvonne. I've worked in the energy sector for the last three decades. That's about 28 years or so. And uh, coming to the energy sector, it was something which I never imagined. I thought probably I would be retiring when I was in the energy sector. But coming 2020, when I was almost going for my retirement, and then uh, having spent all that time, I don't know probably what came up, but all of a sudden during the month of August and September, I received uh, calls from different people. And one of them was a lady who called me, and then he said, are you James Nyamongo? Then I was surprised how did this person knew. Mm. So they requested my, my CV, which I gave out. They looked at it. And I didn't know that they were looking for, for somebody who has been trained all around. Because in the energy sector, I'd been exposed both locally and internationally. And uh, especially from the downstream and upstream. Downstream means that is the retail outlets, and the upstream, that's uh, exploration work. So I had the opportunity of traveling all over the world and going to the best universities ever, especially in exposure. And this was on leadership and uh, stra a strategy execution, and also on finance, and more so on public policy. Mm -hmm. That's the area I really excelled very well. So this opportunity came, and uh, the interview was carried out. The rest is history. Yeah. So I found out by myself that uh, I was in the health sector. Uh -huh. So how I, how I was there, I, now the first thing, how do I find out and how do I move? So I focused on that area and then I found myself that uh, training in a 
The next is between these institutions who are complexity, and they needed somebody trained all around. Okay. And that's why I came handy. And uh, the board was very bold, and they took that decision. Mm -hmm. But I don't regret that the decision they took was wrong. <laughs> Indeed. And we'll talk about uh, some of your ideas of incorporating what you have learned in the energy sector in health. But first, you joined Nairobi Hospital at an interesting time um, you know, in its history. Um, there had been some concerns and perhaps complaints from members of the public about the type of service they were um, you know, getting at the Nairobi Hospital, long patient wait times. But then you also came in sort of in the eye of a storm in terms of uh, the leadership and the management of the hospital. There were wrangles. Those are, you know, we all know about and that's the history. So then how do you then transform a, an organization that you find in that state? Well, my first uh, 90 days, I looked at the organization of the institutions, which I found out that there were quite a number of issues uh, and uh, policies which were lacking, especially on the governance tools. Those are the issues which I needed to focus on. Then the institution was overstaffed, especially in unclean areas. So the, my first action was to actually uh, remove about 200 staff members from our payroll because they were not performing and they were not contributing anything. And then I focused on the nursing care, which was very critical and which is critical actually up to date. So the nurses were resigning almost 20 every month. So we could not sustain that. So I decided to change and see how do we compensate this nurse so that we can stop this pain train. We moved into that one. Then I looked at the governance. Governance, there was no policy put in place that is procurement, financial, and whatever. And the debt portfolio was 3.8 billion. So this is a situation which was and is unattainable. So I looked at James, I have the competence, I have the drive, had the traits, and I had the experience. So I had to put those knowledge into perspective and start driving here. Then my, my, I shared my vision with the board, which was very supportive and which has been very supportive. By doing this one, they gave me a leeway of executing my strategy, which I wanted to bring this institution into, into working. So, in any situation whereby you find out that it, there is no rules of the game, mm. definitely people will bring the ball outside. And that's what was happening. This is what he was bringing the Rangos to Nairobi Astro. This was delaying the delivery of services. And this was the one which was having a problem, especially on debt correction. So we focus on those ones. Then we, the rest, I can say this is right now, because the institution now is on a good financial footing. And all governance structure are in place which we can rely on. We have worked a lot with the current board, yeah. which we have actually moved, I can say mountains, because our debt portfolio now is from 3.8 to 1.8 billion. That means that we have moved up a mountain. And also, we had uh, stored projects, and the equipment were not working. So we have been able to correct those debts, and we have replaced the equipment, we have finished the most of those uh, stored projects. Mm -hmm. And we have also put up state-of-the-art theaters which are going to be opened in the next few days. Okay, and uh, tell us about the patient care uh, and you know, what sort of improvements have been seen in that respect. So uh, if you wanted to maybe attract most of the patients to Nairobi also, yeah. which the experience which they have been going on was delay, turnaround time. Mm -hmm. This one, I managed to put the queue system in place and uh, whereby we had a lot of approval from the insurance companies, I've now employed two care managers who are relation officers between the insurance and the hospital itself. Mm. Yes. Tell me about um, you know, broadening access to healthcare uh, you know, for a moment, in line with the principles of, of universal health coverage, UHC. Um, what would you say has been some of the key things that, that you're focusing on at uh, the Nairobi Hospital in this regard? We, the issue of governance and leadership now is a, it's a history. Now we are focusing how to expand, how do we bring good health care, uh, quality care to the people. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas where we are focusing is universal health care. And by doing that one, we are uh, focusing in opening five outpatient clinics, including the current six we are having in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So we want to go to the counties. That's one area we are focusing on. Number two, we want to improve on the, uh, on the IT system. So we are bringing what we call a health management information system, which will be able now to diagnose a disease if you are outside patient so that you are able to talk with the doctors in the office. And don't forget, Yvonne, that the Nairobi is as a bureau multi-speciality. We are having over 600 multi-speciality doctors there. 
working. How do we utilize this? How do they contribute to the uh, universal health care? These two areas which we are focusing. Two, we are also focusing on bringing the latest uh, state of the art equipment, like the PET scan. How do we bring this one so that you know cancer is a killer disease mm. in this country? So we are bringing all those things to Nairobi. And don't forget, this is a, an also US. All international institutions within East and Central Africa are using the Nairobi. It is the center which we want to develop as a center of excellence. Mm. Uh, but you know, we're, we're saying many people are coming here. But yet, James, many Kenyans are seeking healthcare outside in India, where they say it is cheaper, both in terms of um, getting access to the specialists as well. What do you think can be done to make sure that, um, you know, the Nairobi Hospital and indeed Kenya becomes the center of choice for Kenyans as well? Well, thank you. One of the things which probably I see which is coming and which is I've been thinking about is the reform in the National Hospital Insurance Fund. Mm -hmm. This is the area because if you want to uh, provide universal health care, you have to reform national health insurance so that you broaden the coverage. Mm. That's the area which I want to focus on. And I'm happy that the, Kwanza, the Kenya Kwanza government is focusing on that one by reforming the national health insurance fund. By doing that, they are able now to make Wanchiku or anybody in other places to receive that services by increasing the contributions and ensuring that there is proper governance structure put in place to implement that one so that this universal health care can reach everybody else. Mm. Otherwise, we will, there will be a marriage if we are going to talk about uh, changes at the you know, National Health Insurance Fund if we are not going to focus on leadership and the governance instruments. Nairobi Hospital, um, the Nairobi Hospital, is, is a private institution. And some will say, well, not everybody can have access to, uh, you know, your... Uh, 670 specialists, um, you know, that are there. And what are you doing in terms of, you know, CSR, in terms of reaching out to the people who cannot necessarily afford private health care? Uh, Yvonne, you know, we have not come outside there advertising ourselves what we are doing. But I can tell you what you are doing is a lot. We are doing uh, CSR projects like the Cliff Crafty Babies. Those are children who have been born with the disformities, where we are calling every year. Like now, we are uh, supposed to, we, are, uh, we will be calling out the, uh, the, the treatment of those children in the next few days, whereby we are going to provide between 16 and 20. These are the people from the rural areas who are having nothing. Now, Universal is going to provide accommodation, medicine, and everything. Then also, we will be subsidized with doctors who are working with us. Yesterday, we were having what we call a chip up program, whereby we, are, uh, we have treated 2,000 patients from all the country. The program started out with us in Nairobi Ostro, whereby we are uh, uh, providing drugs free from Maximum Foundation in the US. So this is a program whereby we hold every two weeks, our doctors are providing free services and doing prescriptions and giving out. This is a CRP purely project and many others which we are calling on. And I'm asking that all those patients who are sick, we call out some every two weeks, what we call a screening of cancer. Mm -hmm. And also these crept, uh, crept, crept children, they are calling. And also at surgery, mm -hmm. we are calling out those ones from the remote areas. Those are what are some of the uh, CSR that projects. focuses on children or yes. no children okay with uh, some heart, uh, heart, uh, heart uh, problems yeah. so we cut operations on those uh, children mm -hmm. so that's one of the essence and uh, you can imagine one of those that project or one patient is 1.8 million so you can imagine if you are calling about we have called about 300 of them mm -hmm. how much has uh, we spent it is a lot mm -hmm. and uh, for, don't forget that this institution we don't pay dividend. The money we are making a surplus, we brought back. That's why you see Nairobi Ostro is having high quality equipment. Let me give you an example. We have what we call a cut trap. Mm -hmm. None of the countries in East Africa, in East and Central Africa, which is having, and the, uh, the cut, uh, the, the cut trap, mm -hmm. this is an, a very highly sophisticated equipment. Instead, previously, you would be operated, mm -hmm. or uh, um, surgery done on you. Mm -hmm. Right now, this particular equipment could detect, it call us out what you call cardiac, mm -hmm. uh, vascular, and also neuro. Even if you are playing, there's something, there's a blockage there. It will see it, and there is a way which it can detect, and this, the doctors can use that sophisticated method of unblocking that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have one last question for you, and I, I hope I can try and wrap up um, everything I have in one question. Um, I, I want to know what 
happened to that, um, I believe it was a 100 bed uh, COVID 105. facility, 135 uh, bed facility that was, um, you know, set up during the COVID pandemic and it was done by the Nairobi Hospital in conjunction with the UN. The pandemic is over. Um, you know, what? what's to happen with that facility now? And even as you answer that, maybe you can speak about um, where you see your successes so far and what you see as the future for healthcare in Kenya um, and indeed the region, like you say, um, you know, the Nairobi Hospital is, uh, you know, a center that attracts, um, you know, those from across the, uh, the region. Um, so I'm trying to do a three-prong question in that one. So maybe you can start with the, uh, one, the other facility. Uh, the, yeah. UN, the UN, the Nairobi Hospital UN facility, which is comprises of 135 beds, we are repurposing that one. And we have agreed, we have been having a conversation with the United Nations. We are repurposing that particular facility whereby we are, uh, we are going to use it for a mother and child, as mother and child hospital, which we found out that it's a very big demand in that area. So we are repurposing that one so that we will be having 105 beds hospital, which is having the state of art uh, um, uh, theater and all the facilities. And one of the areas which again we, we are, uh, could say that is we are now self-sustaining, especially when you come to oxygen supply. We are not buying from any company right now. We are manufacturing on uh, oxygen plant, uh, through our oxygen plant. And this is an achievement. Now, that one will be an independent hospital dealing with mother and child. Number two, we, uh, we, 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 we are uh, expanding as I said to universe, uh, to various counties. By expanding, that means that we are going to take the Nairobi Hospital services to the rural areas. Mm -hmm. By doing that one, we are expanding our services and making sure that the patients who are at the rural areas, they are benefiting from here. And this one will assist us not so that we cannot allow most of the patients to go out of the country. That's where we are looking at. Then, we have carried out what we call the audit of our equipment. We are now replacing, like now, you are, we are having the, the latest uh, equipment called MRI. This is another area which we have actually achieved our objectives by doing that. And then looking at the health sector, what our ability to our government is that let us focus on what we are doing by doing uh, making our institution be accountable. Let us appoint leaders who are accountable to ensure that they have delivered the health services to our people in the rural areas. Mm. Thank you very much uh, for that and for your time here with us today. James Nyamongo, who's the CEO of the Nairobi Hospital, who's been our guest this week on Power Talk.